All right, I'm gonna try to go really quick here because I'm at home and my upload speed's not very good. Um, just wanting to take a quick look at the power rule and the power rule in reverse. Okay, if you've not taken calculus yet um, or you're just kind of in there to occupy a seat, then check out pages 37 to 39 in the book, uh, 40 to 42 and 54 to 56. Those are listed on the assignment for the non-calculus types. Uh, this is this is going to get you um, through a lot of what you're going to need to do. It's just applying the power rule, uh, which is finding the derivative when we're thinking about slope relationships, or applying the power rule in reverse, uh, the integral, which is finding the, or the antiderivative is finding uh, something when we have an area relationship that we're looking for. So all those graph skills we built earlier are still applicable, but uh, sometimes these functions get a little more involved. So if we look at, um, let's see, come on, man. Uh, there we are. Uh, if you look at the power rule here, so I've got some fun some thing u, uh, the varies as a function of time, uh, c t to the n. If I want the derivative of that, du dt, I'm going to take that exponent n, pull it down and multiply it by my, my coefficient out front here, and then I'm going to reduce the power in that exponent. Okay, so if we look at this example here, if I want the derivative of that, I'm going to take that 3 down, multiply it by 4, and then I'm going to reduce the exponent to 2. Okay, um, and so there's something they talk about in the book, like uh, if I'm wanting the derivative of this polynomial, um, which is some of a bunch of different function or different little things here, the derivative of each little individual thing uh, added together satisfies that. So I don't have to do anything too crazy here. Um, so I'm just going to look at this and apply that power rule understanding here. So pull down that exponent 2, multiply that by the constant 2, and reduce the, the exponent there. And then this next one, I mean, you can think of this as plus minus 3t to the first. Okay. And so I'm going to pull down the exponent 1, and that's going to make this be 1 times minus 3. And then I'm going to reduce this by 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Anything to the 0th power is 1. And so this thing is going to become, well, it's going to become negative 3. Okay? And so we get rid of all this stuff. And then the thing on the end, um, it's just uh, plus 5, no t to the, I mean, effectively, that's t to the 0 or whatever. We're just going to drop that. We're going to ignore that thing. Okay, that's just a constant. It has no relationship to the slope. That would be the vertical shift on my graph. So here we go. So I've got this thing, and if I wanted to be uh, a little bit clearer, 3 times 4 is 12, t squared plus 4 t minus three okay that's what i would get there so then if i want to know um, the acceleration at a specific time right if this was a velocity make that a clear v if this was a velocity versus time graph the slope would tell me about the acceleration so if i want to know the acceleration at one second 12 times one squared is 12 uh, plus four times one is four minus three so that's going to be 16 minus three 13 meters per second squared would be the acceleration at t equals one second, okay? So that would be something I might do there. Over on the other side, uh, how am I doing for time here? Uh, over on the other side, we're looking at the power rule in reverse. That's an area relationship. Um, so I have that same function, but I'm gonna do the opposite. Rather than pulling um, n down and multiplying it by the constant here and then decreasing this, if you see what I'm gonna do here, I'm going to add one to n, and then I'm going to divide by that. Okay, so you see how this was c t to the n becomes c t to the n plus one, and then that n plus one I'm going to pull down and I'm going to divide by that out in front. Uh, effectively, then the derivative of this thing would be c t to the n. Okay, so I'm doing the antiderivative. I'm doing the opposite, um, and then I'm evaluating an area between two points in time. And so then it just kind of like works like when we're doing a time interval, delta t is tf minus ti. And so you're, you're basically plugging in tf to that new 
thing and subtracting ti to that new thing, okay? Uh, and this works so long as n is not minus 1 because, oh my gosh, if n was negative 1 and I add 1 to it, what the heck goes on here? Let your calculus friends tell you what the heck's going on there. All right, so uh, we got this thing going on here. I'm going to do that ct to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 thing for everything. So 4t cubed, that's going to be 4t to the 4th, and then I'm going to divide that by my new exponent. So that's over 4 plus 2t squared becomes 2t cubed. I'm going to divide by that new exponent. Um, minus 3t to the first. That's going to become 3t to the second. I'm going to divide by my new exponent. And then this plus 5, effectively, this is t to the 0. So that's going to become um, 5t to the first over 1. Okay? And then we can simplify here. So 4 over 4. So this is going to be t to the fourth uh, plus 2 thirds t cubed, oh heck, we're doing math stuff, we might as well leave it in fractional form, uh, minus 3 halves t squared plus 5t uh, plus c, right, math friends, but, you know, you can worry about that later. Um, so this is a velocity versus time graph. Let's say it's for an object that started at uh, position 0 at time 0, and we want to know its displacement. Um between certain points in its motion, uh, let's say between, um, it wants to know change in x maybe from t equals two seconds to t equals four seconds. So then we would we would put in those values. So this is oh come on, this is ti, this is tf. So I'm going to do. Um, 4 to the 4th plus 2 thirds, 4 to the 3rd minus 3 halves, 4 squared plus 5 times 4. Get that value, okay? And then I'm going to subtract from that 2 to the fourth plus two thirds um, two cubed minus three halves two squared plus five two. So I'm just again, those are my my bounds of integration or whatever math people call that. Um, basically, that's like when we think of something like change in anything, uh, change in x, right? That's going to be x f minus xi, and so that's kind of what we're doing here. Um, we're figuring out the position at time f and the position at time 2, or time i, and uh, the change is just that difference. So that's kind of what we're doing, okay? Uh, that's it. I'm going to try to keep it short, and it's probably going to still take uh, 40 minutes to upload, but there we go. Laters.